Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I hope you're well and I hope you're thriving and I hope your practice uh, is resilient and you're applying diligence every day uh, to make your practice daily uh, to secure yourself freedom and a better future for yourself and everybody around you. Always work on making yourself the better version of yourself in terms of the world and in terms of yourself, try to develop every day uh, strive towards wisdom, develop all the virtues and factors that you need to achieve your full potential as a human being. I'll grant you good luck. I wish you good luck. <clears throat> so today I want to talk about ignorance is not bliss. Uh, <clears throat> and why this is, is because uh, there's many reasons why, but the reason why I want to talk about ignorance today is because there is a thing about you know being being ignorant and and just not knowing and not going outside your comfort zones, not going outside uh, what you know is blissful. It's because you know the less you know, the better it is. Um, and even though it's a bit of a cliche and sometimes it's a bit of a joke, and I don't think these days people take that seriously, um, I still think that uh, it's something worth talking about and why it's important that as a, <clears throat> even as a sovereign, even as a human being, to always strive to expand your knowledge and expand uh, your, your base of wisdom and your base of knowing things. Because it's good for you. It's good for everybody else too around you. So I want to use a metaphor that I came up with some time ago, and it's called the pig in shit. Now, a monk swearing? Look. Depend. The, it's the intention behind the word, and like harsh speech is when you're being harsh towards someone when it's not necessary, or just being harsh in general. Uh, swear words don't, if they're used in a harsh way, yes, but generally they're part of the language. You know, they're not part of the formal language, but they're part of the street language. They're part of the everyday language. So, to me, I don't have any problem saying it. Plus, I'm not saying it in a harsh way. <clears throat> shit is shit. <laughs> anyway, so we have the farmer and the pig, right? So the pig stays in the pigsty. It lives in its own excrement, it in its own urine. And the farmer comes along and says, eat everything you want. Don't worry. So the pig eats and eats and eats and, and uh, it... it, it uh, goes you know it, it uh, goes to the t it opens its bowels wherever it eats and doesn't have any uh, give uh, any care you know throws care to the wind it doesn't it caution to the wind it doesn't matter and uh, then the farmer every now and again brings in a part uh, the opposite sex and says mate as much as you want so the pig is thriving and feels really happy and just never questions anything sits there and continuously uh, mates and eats and defecates and just doesn't worry about a thing. Um, anyway, after a period of time, the, the pig has children and, uh, and so forth and so forth. And then when that pig becomes really big and fat, the farmer comes in with a grin and uh, a sharp knife in his pocket. And he says, well, it's time. And the pig just doesn't understand it. It doesn't get it. So it walks very calmly out of the, the cage. It doesn't understand what's going on. And then when it's too late uh, and realizes that it's just about to be uh, butchered or killed or for its for whatever for, for food, although the pig doesn't really even know that, I guess, um, it's too late to try to look for an escape route. Now, the younger pigs... They don't take notice of the big pig going out of the of the pen. They don't take too much notice because they're too busy eating all the free food, um, staying in comfort, and having everything they need. Right? They have everything they need supplied, and the pig never questions. Well, how come I'm getting all this stuff for free? What do I have to do for it? You know, what's what's the payback? You know, but the pig doesn't think this way. Right? And neither does it think about the door or the fences, nor does it reflect on doors and fences and 
what lays out there yonder. Uh, it doesn't understand that the, near the pigsty is another shed, which is a butchering shed. So the pig never jumps out of the pen and never see, gets to see the, the butchering shed. All right. So in life, what I'm talking about is, is something similar about ignorance. It's kind of like uh, <clears throat> staying in, not developing yourself and not uh, cultivating virtue, not cultivating things that are hard to cultivate. Uh, doesn't let you, doesn't allow you to grow as a person, doesn't allow you to grow as a human being. It, what it does, it stifles and stagnates uh, your, your growth and your full potential as a human being. And this is something that uh, is quite sad and, and quite <clears throat> unnecessary, actually. Depend, you know, wherever you are, whether you're in a poor area, a rich area, it doesn't matter. Even rich people tend to stagnate. It doesn't because there's things called creature comforts. Uh, there's call, things called uh, routines, things called uh, you know, barriers, which you reach. You reach a certain level and the goals... Um, tend to be in, in uh, this world, in, in Western world, particularly in the commercial worlds. I mean, everywhere is a commercial world, really. You know, wherever you are, you, you have to earn money and things like this. So the goal is always making money at the end of the day, which is another, which in the, which is another barrier. It's like another fence, right? Because rich people just tend to break that barrier on the finance level and uh, not criticizing them because you know, I'm not saying all rich people and all poor people are not developing themselves. I'm not saying this, right? But what I'm talking about is ignorance. Ignorance in the Buddha sense. Ignorance of the Four Noble Truths. Ignorance of reality of how things are. And ignorance of the fact that we have uh, a capability, a capability to, to reach a full level of uh, completeness as human beings, uh, perfect a lot of things and reach, reach astounding levels of perfection and astounding levels of knowledge and, asto and and have astounding levels of knowledge and have astounding level of wisdom too, right? So ignorance holds us back from that in a lot of ways because we're scared to look beyond what we know or go outside our comfort zones or go outside our lifestyles or go outside our what we just know as, re as, as way of life and we stay stuck in that. And spiritual development in this case is is not developing where you know, the, a lot of spiritually it, the spiritual practice itself is not developed because uh, it's based on uh, achieving certain things and then just staying there and, and not progressing any further outside of those boundaries. So that is a form of ignorance in itself too because not understanding that, well, death, understanding that we move on, understanding that this life is uh, impermanent, understanding that we're on a one-way ticket in this life and everything will be abandoned in the end and we move on. So that spiritual practice is to aid that as well, is to enhance the mysterious where do we go next kind of thing because you want to make sure, well, at least I, I, I for me, you want to make sure that whatever's out there yonder um, after this life, you want to land in a good place, at least the minimum. So for that, like everything else, we work today because tomorrow we want a better we want a better day. We want better things. Well, that's uh, I think what most people work for, right? Just to survive. But even if you're working to survive, you're still working to have food stored in your in your pantry or to have things so your life can be more comfortable tomorrow. But when in the spiritual sense, we don't think about what about when we die. What about being comfortable in the next life and things like this? And this is why there's there's not enough, uh, I guess, uh, heedfulness. And we tend to go to the extremes and indulge a lot in pleasures and forget about the fact that uh, things that are earned require work. They require work. And things that are honestly earned, hard earned, require work. And there's no cheating out of that. Uh, for example, people think going to heaven... Um, might be easy or it's just about having a belief system and that's it and not cultivating or cleaning yourself out of all the negative stuff or all the defilements or all the things that or the wrong views inside yourself so this is something that um, in the spiritual world or particularly in Buddhism 
in the practice of Buddhism is, is it becomes it is the, it's, it's one of the biggest focuses. It's one of the biggest focus because there is a saying that uh, the the wiser you are, the more cultivated and developed you are, the more virtue you are, the more of use you are to yourself, and the more of use you are to your to your family and everybody else around you. And that's something that I questioned myself a long time ago before becoming a monk, and where I was at in my life. I realized that I can have all the material comforts, and this is just a personal thing. It's not a criticism on anybody else. I'm not criticizing you if you decide to live this way. That's up to you. I'm just saying this is my opinion for myself, right? Like I reached a point where I had all the material things, but inside I didn't feel or sense uh, much spirituality. I, I felt like there was a void. So I decided that that would be the most important thing for me um, from that part of my life onwards. And I decided to ordain as a monk and go down this road and practice. And I haven't looked back and I don't regret my decision in any way because today I can talk and do these videos from a much uh, more relaxed place and, and a place where I've done a lot of hard work, haven't finished, I've got still a lot, of, a, a lot to go, but I can honestly say the hard work's been worth it. And through this, I'm helping myself more and I'm able to be, I'm in a stronger position to help others in different ways. Uh, and I feel a lot more happier in myself. And I, and I think that's something that uh, we need to focus more in the world, in, in our societies uh, everywhere, is more about the internal happiness, like really being happy. Because the external structure, it's like having a house. Most people who have a house want to share it with someone, right? And or when you go alone to a house and there's no one there and you've got all your things, that can be a lonely and voidless, a void feeling sometimes. It can feel very void and very empty and very actually frightening sometimes, like there's no focus. So where most people dive into is distraction. So they might watch a lot of TV or get into food or you know, get into um, things that revolve around maybe uh, entertainment and things like that, rather than focus, do the hard work and focus inward. And I think this is a big part, a big chunk of what's missing in our daily practice. I think spirituality needs to come back in a big way. But I'm not talking about spirituality in a philosophical sense or in a belief sense. I'm talking in an actual practice sense, with actual practicing, sitting in meditation, uh, sit, sitting and concentrating, developing your, uh, your, your awareness, developing insight, developing... Um, well, the Noble Eightfold Path, those, you know, thinking about your and cultivating uh, right views and working on right resolve and things like this. I think that if you were to bring that more into your life and make that the centerpiece, I mean, let's face this, if you want to earn money and you want to be successful in life in the, I guess, in the, in the worldly sense, well, I think the wiser you are, the better, the better off you are, isn't it? The stronger you are, the better off you are, isn't it? The more diligent you are, the better off you are, isn't it? Doesn't that help and aid your 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 striving in in the in worldly life in financial matters? I think it does. And I think the wiser you are, the stronger you are, the more the more developed you are, the more virtues you have. I think that would give you much more success uh, than just coming home at night, putting your feet up on the couch, and thinking it's over. You know, that, the, that your duties are done. I've bought my house, I've got my income, that's it. I'm just going to sit down and just watch be and distract myself into, into worldly things and forget about my chitta, forget about my, forget about my spirituality, forget about death, forget about the fact that I've got to move on, forget about the fact that this life is impermanent and, there's nothing, and, and, and we're moving on. And this is very dangerous. May you grow in Dharma. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and share with your friends.